the the first the, the first study I think that you're referring to um, was done by Dr. Maria Flesseru and colleagues. This is an analysis that came specifically from the Empowered Phase Three study, and the Empowered Phase Three study um, was actually a head-to-head -head comparison of oral octreotide or micapsa to injectable products such as octreotide and lanreotide. Um, and so we published that data back earlier in 2022. And then this was a follow-up to look and see, you know, are, was there anything within the patient population that would have predicted how they would respond to my capsa therapy? Um, and so they did a statistical analysis based off of all the patients, um, such as things like tumor size. Um, they looked at duration of years in which they had acromegaly diagnosed. They looked at, you know, was there any sort of residual adenoma left post-surgery? Um, they looked at baseline IGF-1, they looked at growth hormone, and then they also looked at things like what dose of injectable medication they may have been on before, because typically you can dose those injectables kind of in a low, medium, or high dose. And so they compared all those things and they put the, um, and they looked at it across both the injectables group and then also the oral group that were receiving my capsa. And what they ended up finding was, is that really the, there was only one predictor of response, and that was the patient's baseline IGF-1 level. So while all patients responded um, across varying levels of IGF-1 at baseline, um, obviously patients that had lower IGF-1s were even more likely to, to respond to oral octreotide. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter what dose injectable you might be on. It doesn't necessarily matter the size of your adenoma, things of those na that nature. Basically, this study is showing you, or this analysis is showing you that if, you, if the physician and the patient agree that they want to make a therapy change to something like micapsa, you can do so. With, with more confidence now knowing that you can make this switch and not necessarily worry about, oh, my patient may not respond. Um, you know, this, this study is showing that in fact, the patients do respond pretty much regardless of other factors of the disease state. And then we had a second um, abstract and poster that was done by um, Eliza Gear and colleagues, um, which is actually coming out of uh, the macro registry. And the macro registry is um, kind of our short, short nomenclature for the management of acromegaly registry is what that stands for. And this registry has been ongoing for a number of years. It's actually a prospective observational cohort study of patients with acromegaly who are either eligible for, for medical therapy or, or are already receiving medical therapy um, post-surgery. And so um, what's unique about this registry is that it actually compares data from both surveys that are done by the patient, but also surveys that are done by the patient's treating physician, and then compares that data across the two to kind of look, you know, are there any differences seen by how the patient's reporting disease and outcomes versus how the physician's reporting disease and outcomes. So in this particular poster, uh, we had a, a data cut of 199 patients um, and that they had data from both the physician and from the patient perspectives. And so basically what we found in this particular um, study or this part of the registry analysis was that 77% of patients were considered biochemically controlled when, when we look at their IGF-1 levels, but there were 30% of patients that then rated their symptoms as only partially or not controlled at the same time point. So despite having biochemical control on a lab value, the patient's symptoms were not controlled, right, based on their report. And so we then also looked at a group that had IGF-1 levels in the normal range, right? So they were completely controlled. 
and 50% still, report, still reported symptoms such as joint pain and fatigue. Um, at least, you know, a quarter of them reported other symptoms in addition to those such as headache and swelling. Um, and the other one, which patients complain a lot about is, you know, memory, memory problems or, or brain fog. And so, um, again, what we saw is that even if you're biochemically controlled, there appears to be a lack of understanding of maybe the quality of life that patients are experiencing from the symptomatology of the disease. And so that was one of the biggest takeaways from the study is when you looked at the difference between what physicians were reporting as to what patients were reporting on the surveys, a lot of times there was not agreement, right? And so um, in patients that had good biochemical control, these patients typically reported a higher degree of severity of their symptoms, while physicians typically reported less severity um, than the patient did. And so what this study is basically showing us is that talking about symptoms and not just looking at the IGF-1 level for biochemical control is really imperative to treating the whole picture of acromegaly um, and making sure that, you know, if one treatment maybe is not controlling symptoms, you know, maybe we need to look and see are there other treatments that may be more viable for this particular patient case and make it a patient-driven kind of discussion on what would be best for the patient in terms of not only controlling them biochemically through IGF-1, but also helping them control their disease symptoms better so that they hopefully have a better quality of life.